I got a new case for my Nintendo Switch. It's called the Soft Porchy, which means soft pouch. For the Nintendo Switch, it's by a company called Game Tech. I'm gonna unbox it for you now. <laughs> that was it, that was the unboxing. Here's some plastic, don't need that. And it's similar to a case that I used to use for my PS Vita. And I'll tell you why I'm interested in this case. It's because it's side loading. And the bag that I've been using recently is a, is a rucksack. And so I open my rucksack and I need to take the, cart the, the game out. I always have to take the whole thing out first. Like so, I have to take the whole switch out open it flat like this to get the, the switch out. And in fact, because I've been using this case which protects the buttons, I have it like this. You can see there's little indentations inside the case here. And when I try to take it out of the case from, from the top, if I try to take it out the top like this, it gets stuck because the analog stick gets stuck on one of the indentations. So I have to open the whole thing and take it out of the bag. In Tokyo, especially, and any country which is crowded and you're on a train, you want to avoid getting as many things out of the bag as possible. So I thought it would be nice to have a case that just sits in my rucksack. I can just pull it straight out like this without bothering anyone else because I want to bother as few people as possible when I'm on the chain. So here it is, this is the Game Tech Soft Pochi. It feels, you know, this is standard neoprene. I don't think it's going to be especially protective. One of the main issues I think is gonna be, whoa, it's way too big. This is way too big. This is how wide the switch is and this is, look how much extra there's on the sides. Ah, it's a bit of a shame. So it's a little bit wider than the actual official Nintendo case that I had before. Ah, that's a bit disappointing, but as a result, it means it's going to be much, much thinner. The only problem is it doesn't protect the, the analog sticks and the buttons. If you follow me on Twitter, you'll see that recently I got home and my Switch was on 20% battery. I was a little bit disappointed about that, but probably my fault for switching off the lock system. It's quite a bit bigger than the actual console itself. I think it could have, it, they could afford to have made it a little more tight fitting, but the problem is if it's tight fitting, then it will kind of grip onto the analog sticks as you push them in. Anyway, something that I like about Nintendo Switch, even if you do break the analog sticks on the Joy-Cons, they are removable. This is not something you would have to send, of course, you know, it, you still have to pay money to get it fixed, but at least you don't have to send the whole unit back to Nintendo to get it fixed. You can just buy one of these, I don't know how much they cost, maybe 3,000, 4,000 yen, about $40, $50. They're, kind of expensive, but at least you don't have to send your Switch away. You know, Friday night before you go on holiday and you go, oh no, it's broken. You could actually just go to the store, pick up a single Joy-Con, buy that, click it on, and you're, and you're good to go. I'm not too worried about damage, and I think this is going to be much better because look, it's got this little flap, which means that you're, you're unlikely to drop it out of the, the case. And also, I can top, pull it out, like so. I mean, it's going to be so much better for my rucksack. In fact, let's try that out now. Sadly, there's nowhere to actually put games in this case, but oh well, we can't have everything. Okay, so this is quite a cool bag I've been using recently. It's by a company called Zero Halliburton. I don't know if they're a Western company or a Japanese company. Any anyway, it's nice and thin. It's actually designed for cycling, but it's really, really good if you're a commuter, you need to get to work with, and you know that you only really need your laptop. You're not gonna be carrying some unknown number of documents. It's really, really good and perfect for Switch. So here, let's put the Switch in my bag instead of what's in my bag. It's what am I putting in my bag? This is so much better because before I would, I would open it, try to get the Switch out and it wouldn't come out. I had to take the whole thing out, open it and get the Switch out. Now, much more, much more easier, much more easily, I can just flick this open like so and pull switch out like so. Unfortunately, not very protective on the front here, so if I wanted to be more protective, protu productive, protective, I'll need to put a bit of hard plastic maybe here on the front, but instead what I'll do, because I always have a laptop in here anyway, I'll probably just have it have the face facing the inside of the bag like so, so that even if there's anything bumping on the front of the bag, it's not bumping on the screen, it's just bumping on the back of the console. If you're interested in this product, it's called the Switch Soft Pochi. I mean, this is the original Switch case. I'll still keep this in case I'm going traveling and I need to put the Switch like in a suitcase and I need a little more protection, but for now, also, thank you to everyone who commented on the previous video, which was about the new LEGO game coming out on Switch. I had made a video talking about how apparently, you know, there's a rumor 
that you would have to download an extra 13 gigabytes even if you bought the cartridge. So there was a theory that you might not be able to play the game if you don't do the download, but Lego sorry, Warner Brothers has issued a statement saying that you will be able to play the game even without this, this supposed download. So we still don't really know what the download is for. We don't know if maybe that's, they've just changed their stance on it or maybe they're just clarifying it and everyone got it wrong to start with. I don't know, but we'll be monitoring the situation very closely. Let's hope that it's not a trend for games to be shipping unplayable. Let's hope that cartridge games continue to be sold in a playable state. It's actually quite funny, I, I made that video and then I edited it and I uploaded it immediately, clicked publish, and essentially, and like within three minutes or four minutes, there was already a comment on there saying, you just, you just missed an announcement by a couple of minutes, Warner Brothers just stated that you will be able to play the game and you won't have to do this massive download. And I was like, ah, I missed it, just, just by a few minutes, but you know, I had quite a good time making the video anyway. It was a good cup of coffee and there was a story in that video as well. So if you're interested in hearing my trauma inducing experience that I had as a child at Walmart, feel free to click on the link whenever it shows up to watch while I'm, while I'm wearing coffee. No, while I'm making coffee, episode 11. There's a good story at the end of that one. And one last thing I wanna mention since I'm making a video today is I just saw in the news that Dingo has just gone bankrupt, which is really, really sad because Dingo made this game called Photo Kano, which was really, really great for learning Japanese. They speak really, really slowly, and it's they, basically the game revolves around having conversations, extremely short, simple conversations. So when I was learning Japanese, I thought it was really useful. Anyway, Photo Kano wasn't as successful as they wanted. They replaced it with another game called Reco Love, which was really, really unsuccessful. And of course, they've had to file for bankruptcy. And it's, it's really sad because they were like champions for the Vita. They were really trying to make content for the Vita, stuff that, you know, anime fans would enjoy, and it's such a shame to see that they've gone bankrupt, and not just like they're out of money, but they can't even pay a lot of the people who were working there, so it's, it's probably, they had people working there for a number of months, not getting their paychecks, and now they can't pay them back, I don't know what happens. It's really sad though, isn't it, because they were trying to champion the Vita, and I love that companies were trying to champion for, you know, the Vita, and it's just a shame. But this stuff does happen, and you know, as the mobile world is taking over gaming, people are having to, you know, bite the bullet. Sorry, I was gonna say bite the dust. No, don't, don't bite, the, bite the dust. Bite the bullet, and you know, try to make games for mobile as well as for whatever platform it is that they feel really strongly about. I really think the Vita, if only Sony had stood by it, I think a lot of these third-party developers might have had a stronger chance, but it's like, it's just really, it's just really sad to see them go. Anyway, that's the end of this video. Just wanted to show you this really simple case. It costs $15. I know that's quite expensive for a piece of neoprene, but for what it does, I'm quite happy. I think it's a little bit big. I mean, look, this is how much, this is how much extra, extra material you have coming off the side of the, of the, console. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, share the links and all that good stuff and I will see you in the next Nihongo Gamer video.